Hi friends, welcome to Mega Technical Hub. Today we will discuss about some reliability curves that is bar tap curve, PF curve that is potential failure curve and we will learn about different frequency ranges, what is infrasound, what is the audible range and what is ultrasound and when, to you, when you should use ultrasound and when you should use vibration. What is the significance of ultrasound vibration in any industry to predict the health of the machine? First, we will learn about bathtub curve. Why you call it as a bathtub curve? It is a tub similar to that we use for the taking bath. This bathtub curve is a graphical representation of a life cycle of a equipment that shows overall product failure distribution. It does not depict the failure rate of single item but describes relative failure rate of entire population of products over the period of time. In the bathtub curve we have failure rate in the y axis and the x axis there is a time period. It has three stages. First one is infant mortality, second is normal life, third is wear out zone. What is infant mortality? When a new baby is born, we take utmost care to have better life. So similar to that equipment, we need to take utmost care. So when a new equipment is installed, it failure rate is very high because there may be some problem in the assembly, there may be a problem in the design or there may be problem in the manufacturing defects. If you consider a gearbox, there may be some asperities in the tooth surface. Asperities means peaks and valleys. So initial period, these peaks and valleys vanishes and it takes a proper shape. So always the OEM, any equipment manufacturer, the gearbox, he recommends to change the oil after running of 100 hours because to because initially we have the more wear and tear so in this case we have a proper maintenance proper installation then this uh, failure rate starts decreasing and second stage we reach that is normal life from a to b we call it as a normal useful life here the failure rate is very constant and at the point b we will have the equipment starts degrading. There will be a wear and tear of the parts. There will, the fatigue starts. So after this B, we call it as a wear out zone. And in this case, the failure rate is increasing trend. So in this case, we use some predictive tools to have EWI, that is early warning indicator. So there are many different condition monitoring tools that I will explain in the next slide which tool we need to use first to have a better EWI that is early warning indicator. These are the some of the condition monitoring tools we generally use in any industry. First one is oil analysis to predict the health of the oil. Generally we, we measure here viscous change in viscosity, tan, uh, TBN, moisture etc. Second is ultrasound, acoustic emission. These are the high frequency detection. These used for the early detection of any bearing fault. Here vibration analysis. Again there is a ferrography, that is wear debris analysis to predict the health of the gear teeth. Next is thermography. Also use NDT, that is non distributive testing, ultrasound testing, diaprint test, Many per testing, RT and some thickness for the condition monitoring activities. So, when to use these predicted tools at what stage? This can be easily described by DIPF curve, that is design installation potential failure curve. This curve is originally developed by flock rate and modified by Brian NCS. So before installation, we should have proper design of any industry. 
so you call it as a d for reliability and d for maintenance design for reliability and design for maintenance after the design is completed then we start to install the machines then you call it as a ip interval that is installation potential failure interval so we should have higher ip interval so you should have proper precision maintenance or proactive maintenance you need to have proper alignment and proper balancing and proper piping arrangements so by having all these things we can have higher ip interval and once the equipment is installed here the point p where the defects begins to start there is p is the point at which failure can begin to detect so in this after the p that is failure point potential failure point we need to identify early warning indicators so at this case there is f there is a functional failure in between this potential to functional failure we call it as a pf interval that is potential failure interval so we need to understand when to use this predictive tools to have early warning indicator in a better way so i will explain in this pf curve in the next slide in a easy manner as i already told pf means potential failure curve so after operating of certain hours then the defects starts to increase that is called as p point okay at this here there is a failure initiated so in this case initially to detect the early warning of any bearings as early warning indicator to detect the defect at the initial stage we should use ultrasonic acoustic emission or ultrasounds this ultrasonic energy can detect the pf interval then you have the time for 1 to 12 months that interval because once the failure starts and you will replace at the stage then that you have more time so after that you have the vibration analysis it can also predict the health of the machine then in this case there is pf interval is 1 to 9 months after that ferrography that is wear debris analysis that is also the pf curve is 1 to 6 month if you don't use this predictive tools either acoustic emission ultrasound or vibration analysis or oil analysis then the temperature starts increasing in this case then you have the pf interval of 1 to four months again further if you don't take care much care then it starts giving audible noise then the interval is very less because once the noise starts within four weeks there will be a failure that is potential failure after that you can easily by touch or by feel in this case only the 1 to 5 days there will be a failure of the equipment in this stage also if are not taking much care then there will be a secondary failure and there is suppose there is a bearing defects then it starts the problem of the gears and also shafts if we don't take care of here also then there will be a catastrophic failure this is all about pf curve potential failure curve first one is pro proactive stage next is predictive stage here there is a reactive domain before going for the ultrasound and vibration just i would have to explain what are the different frequency ranges here from the 
जीरो टू ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स जनरली वी कॉल इट इज अ इंफ्रा साउंड दिस ऑल साउंड बिलो ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स दे क्वालिफाइज एज अ इंफ्रा साउंड जनरली वेन एवर दिज अर्थ क्वेक इट प्रोड्यूस अ साउंड इक्वल टू लेस देन द ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स दैट इज कॉल इट इज अ इंफ्रा साउंड सो वी कैनॉट हियर दैट साउंड बिलो ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स सो ओनली सम मॉल रेट सम ऑफ द वन कैंड ऑफ एनिमल एंड एलिफेंट दे कैन हियर दिस इंफ्रा साउंड लेस देन द ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स एंड सेकेंड फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंज इज ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड हर्ट्स जनरली कॉल इट इज अ ऑडिबल साउंड दिस ह्यूमन्स कैन डिटेक्ट साउंड इन अ फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स टू ट्वेंटी किलो हर्ट्स तो ह्यूमन इन्फेंट्स कैन एक्चुअली हेयर फ्रीक्वेंसी स्लाइटली हेयर देन ट्वेंटी किलो हर्ट्स बट लूज सम हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी सेंसिटिविटी एज दे मैच्योर द अपर लिमिट ऑफ एवरेज ऑडिबल इज ऑफन क्लोजर टू फिफ्टीन टू सेवेंटीन किलो हर्ट्स दैट इज फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू हर्ट्स इट जनरली कॉल इट इज अ ऑडिबल साउंड एंड एबो ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड हर्ट्स वी जनरली कॉल इट इज अ अल्ट्रा साउंड दैट अल्ट्रा साउंड ऑल्सो वी कैन वी कैनॉट हेयर सो बिकॉज सम ऑफ द एनिमल्स द बैट डॉल्फिन डॉग्स दे कैन हेयर दिस अल्ट्रा साउंड दीज आर सम ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंजेस इन विच द एनिमल्स कैन हेयर हेयर फॉर द ऑडिबल रेंज इज ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड हर्ट्स द एलिफेंट कैन हेयर फ्रॉम फाइव हर्ट्स टू ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड हर्ट्स सो इट कैन डिटेक्ट इट कैन हेयर दैट अर्थ क्वेक दैट इज लेस देन ट्वेंटी हर्ट्स दैट इज इंफ्रा साउंड अगेन डॉग दे कैन हेयर फ्रॉम फिफ्टी हर्ट्स टू फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड हर्ट्स मोर देन द ऑडिबल रेंज सो वेन एवर यू पास near the dogs they bark because they they can hear the footsteps sound and next is cat that is 45 to 65000 hertz also it is more than the audible range here mouse is around 1000 to 1000 kilohertz for the bat it is 2000 to 120 kilohertz For the whale, it is thousand to one twenty kilo similar. For the dolphin, they have the higher frequency range. That is from seventy five to one fifty kilohertz. It is much more than the audible range. So, generally, the dolphins they generally use for the shows for the entertainment. Let's come to the difference between the acoustic ultrasound shock pulse against the vibration. Whenever there is a surface, a subsurface defects in any bearings or very minor dent mark, whenever the balls or rollers passes through that dent mark subsurface, then it produces the shock waves. These shock waves are higher. frequency but they have lower wavelength because they vanishes very fast so they have the higher they are producing higher frequency range but the what we cannot hear that frequency because it is more than the 20000 hertz that it produces the ultra sound waves that is shock waves so some of the tools we use for detecting the high frequency Sound waves, but the initially bearing deterioration. Once the subsurface cracks develops further, for the surface cracks, and it again develops. There will be a some oscillation moment of the equipment. Then we can feel the vibration. So for the initial stage, whenever there is a lubrication problem or with a minor subsurface defects. it produces the higher frequency sound sound waves to detect that early warning that uh, to detect the bearing fault very early stage we use acoustic ultrasound or shock pulse they can detect higher frequency ranges and once the it start oscillating frequency will be less then 
वी कैन मेजर इट बाय वाइब्रेशन बट इन ऑफ द सम ऑफ द एनालाइजर्स वी यूज सम स्पेशल एम्पलीट्यूड फॉर एग्जांपल हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी एक्सेलरेशन पी क्यू स्पाइक एनर्जी एनल ऑफ एक्सेलरेशन दे सम ऑफ द स्पेशल एम्पलीट्यूड्स हियर ऑल्सो वी कैन डिटेक्ट द हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी फॉल्ट सिग्नल्स बट इज नॉट दैट रेंज ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड और शॉक पल्स ओके इट हैज ऑल्सो सम हायर फ्रीक्वेंसी बट लेसर देन दैट अल्ट्रासाउंड और शॉक पल्स हियर दिस इन दिस केस स्पेशल एम्पलीट्यूड वी यूज सम एच पी दैट इज हाई पास फिल्टर फिल्टर टू सप्रेस द लोअर फ्रीक्वेंसीज ऑल्सो वी कैन हैव ओनली दिस हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी इन द स्पेक्ट्रम दैट ऑल दिस आई विल एक्सप्लेन इन द लेटर इन इन केस ऑफ सिग्नल प्रोसेसिंग लेटर सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड क्लियरली अबाउट द डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसी रेंजेस वट इज अल्ट्रासाउंड वट इज बाट कर वट इज पी एफ कर वेन टू यूज डिफरेंट प्रडिक्टिव टूल्स टू हैव द अर्ली वॉर्निंग इंडिकेटर्स वट इज हाई पास फिल्टर so i will cover the ihp filter and the some of the ultrasounds in the later sessions so thank you bye bye